in this tutorial I'll show you how to use the PySpark MongoDB connector to get data from MongoDB and into Spark. We'll then use Spark's SQL layer to query MongoDB data. Um, MongoDB is a NoSQL database and I like using NoSQL for the convenience of unstructured data like JSON which is a um, JavaScript object notation uh, data structure or, uh, key, or key value pair. So um, you know I'm, I'm also very familiar with writing SQL queries. Um, I quite like writing them uh, to query data so PySpark for this purpose is uh, very useful. So um, I'll just enlarge this quickly. And what I'll do, I will go into my tutorial folder for Spark. And I'll just create a new Python file. And I'll call that PySpark Mongo DB Connector .py, and I'll just open that up slightly. Okay, so I'll just go into that folder. Using Vim, and I'll just come down here or up here to go into my file. Okay, and just to start off, I'll put in my shebang. And I'll just save that file. So before I get started on this, I'll just um, make sure that I've got MongoDB installed. If I don't have it installed, then I'll install it. Just quickly show you how I do that. And then I'll put some data into it too. And, um, and then we can start using Mongo. So I'll just open up another tab, enlarge that. So the first thing I want to do is just check that I have Mongo installed. So it's Mongo D and version. So it's not installed. So I'm going to um, just go over to the website. So let's open up a browser. And I'll type in mongodb install Ubuntu. Okay, so I'm now on the page for installing Ubuntu and it's really straightforward. All I need to do is just follow the instructions which I just copy this key and I'll just go over to another browser window or terminal window. And 
Okay, so sorry, that was my public key which I added. So the next thing which I need to do is then add this to my sources list.d file or folder. That's added. I can then do an update. Then I can install MongoDB. And note that the one which I am downloading is MongoDB hyphen org. So there are there are different installations, but this one seems to work just fine for what I need to do. So just let that continue to install. Okay, that's good. So let's do another MongoD version. Cool. It's installed 4.2.8. So um, typically what I do, I, I use a lot of Twitter data and um, I won't show you in this tutorial how I connect to Twitter via its API and get data in. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just quickly uh, get some data in and then um, we can continue. In order for me to use MongoDB, uh, I'll first need to ensure that the server has started after I've installed it. And to check, I can do a service MongoDB status okay so it says um, it's uh, inactive so what I need to do I just do a sudo service mongod start okay and now I can check the status so as you can see, I've got a green light and the server has started. And if you wanted to start the server every time you boot up, so instead of having to manually start the server, then on boot up of your machine, you can just do a sudo sys turn ctl enable MongoD service. Um, so I already have that activated and um, yeah, you just need to do that and then that way uh, the server, MongoDB server will be started on every boot up. Okay. Okay, so I've already installed some Twitter data and what I'll do, I'll just go into the Mongo shell to verify that. Um, so I've installed data from, sorry, I've extracted data from the Guardian the newspaper and to access the Mongo shell, I'm going to do a user bin mongo okay so what i can do i can show the databases that i have so i'll do a show dbs so admin config and local um, are default databases and the one which i've installed um, 
is Twitter user timeline, or let's say the one where I've inserted data into is Twitter user timeline. And when you insert data, it automatically creates the uh, database and the collection um, when you insert it. And the collection is just another reference for the table. And inside those tables, we have uh, documents, which in the SQL world would be records. So um, I want to use Twitter user timeline. So it's now switched over to that database. And what I want to do is just show the collection. So I know that I've inserted data from the Guardian. So here is the collection Guardian. And what I will now do, I will just count the number of records in there. So I'll do a DB Guardian count. So I have 200 records. And when you connect to the Twitter API and you just grab records from someone's timeline, then it the default number is going to be about 200 and so I will do a db guardian dot find so that way I can just get some records back or documents back and there you go so it's in a JSON format and these are the records which I have in the guardian uh, collection belonging to the Twitter user timeline uh, database. Okay, so I've installed my data or inserted my data, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get to that data via the PySpark MongoDB connector, connecting directly to the MongoDB and getting that data into um, Spark. So I'll just quit out of the Mongo shell. And what I'll do, I'll just go back to my script and I'll say from my spark imports spark session. And, oh, sorry, I just forgot to put SQL on that. So that's going to come from pyspark.sql. And I'm just going to create two variables. So the first one's going to be input URI equals, and another one is going to be output URI equals so we just go back to the first one and put in the value so it's going to be mongo db and I'll just put the local address in there and I'm going to pull that locally and the database I want to connect to it will be Twitter user timeline and the collection will be guardian and I'll just do the same for the next one Okay, so we've got our two variables populated. And I'll create a session. So I'll say my spark or an instance session dot builder. my app name and 
in that I'll just put I'll give it a app name of Twitter I could put any value in there dot config spark dot mongo db input dot uri and I'll put in my first variable and the second configuration will be the output configuration will be the connector so I'll just put my value in there so that will be spark chars packages is all over the place. Okay, here we go. So that would be org. So this is the um, connector and it will be mongo db.spark colon mongo Spark connector. I'll just make that a little bit larger so you can see it. And we'll put the version number of the connector. So the latest one is 2.4.2. And then lastly, we want to include get or create. Okay, I think that looks okay, so I'll just double check that. And spot the mistake. Okay, so we've got builder app name, we've got the input output URIs, we've got the uh, driver uh, spark connector, and get or create. So I think that looks okay. Now, once we've done that, we want to import the data, and we're going to import it and convert it to a uh, data frame. So here's my instance or my my object. Spark. We want to read that data and we want to specify the format. So it will be com mongo db spark dot sql default source and we want to load that data into the data frame and the next thing that I'll do um, once I pull that data in um, there's a couple of things I just want to do to validate that so I will print the schema for that data frame so that would be df dot print 
Joomla. And you'll see that once we pull that data in and we look at the schema, um, being Twitter data, um, it's going to be quite huge. So I think that looks okay. Let's have another quick look so we don't get any mistakes when we run this. I think that looks fine. Okay, yeah, I think that might be okay. All right, if it's not, then we'll just read the um, error messages and correct it. Just clear this. Okay, so we do have an error, unexpected indent. Let's go in there and correct that. So on line 11. Ah, okay. So I forgot a backslash. Let's run that. Let's get rid of this. And hopefully that will work. And we have another error. Okay, let's go back and fix that on line 8. Let's have another read of that. Builder object has no attribute con gig. Okay. Con gig. Okay, there it is. Okay, I see it now. Okay, and hopefully that fixes it. And we can run that. So we have another error, um, and let's have another look what that could be. So I think it's the wrong version number of the connector. So let's change that to a 4. And let's see if that works. So we'll clear that. And run it. And still yet another error. And let's go and see if we've got any mistakes. Okay, so I can see another mistake. And that should be a dot. this and run it and another mistake and I believe it's going to be the version of spark so I've got 211 and I'll just change that to the latest one to 12 and we'll give that a try so I'll just clear that and run that again Okay, so that's now worked, and as you can see, we've got the schema for Twitter, and it's quite huge. Um, 
and let's try something else. So I'll just go back to my script. And instead of printing out the schema, I'll print out the first row. And I'll clear that again and run it. Okay, and there we have it. We've got the first row. So from here, it's printed it out. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly show you how you connect to MongoDB, and I'll show you um, some more interesting stuff um, in the next tutorial.